scripture explanations, Jesus' interpretation of several different Bible passages, chapter 13, Matthew 24, 37, as in the days of Noah, written down by Jacob Lorber on the 11th January 1844, translated and spoken by Pascal. Just write down whatever you have. And as the days of Noah, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 37 and Luke 17, 26. You have chosen a text, and it's again the right one. Only the message of this text is too obvious before your eyes. Or this central sun is exceedingly close. So close actually, that it would be very odd if you would not see it at the first glance. And it is even more odd, because the time of Noah lies in front of you like an open book already. As you know, how the cultures of the valley, during the time of Noah, also threw themselves into all sorts of science and literature. A well-known king of the valley was a famous author. Thousands of people followed his example, and in a very short time, the entire world back then was flooded with myriads of books and scriptures. The more this literature prevailed, the more the people read and studied, the colder they became in their hearts, and at the same time, they became more and more cunning and devised all sorts of evil. They started to trap the people by the means of politics, and soon they did not shudder from using any means, even if it was extremely outrageous to achieve some vain, domineering purpose. At the end, they even managed to come so far as to value the people according to gold. Whoever did not possess any was made a slave. They determined to use him as a literal pack animal, and in this manner, they pushed these horror scenes so far that I had to finally lose my patience, and I could only preserve this earth from its doom by a general judgment. This was the way things were during Noah's time. Well, how are they now? I showed you already a while ago the so-called 12 hours, how things are right now. If I were to show you another one of these revelations, you would discover a major progress in the world politics and cruelty. And I tell you, not a lot more is necessary for you to completely enter Noah's time in which houses made of glass had to be built, so that men of the most cunning politics were always able to monitor without any difficulty what their subjects were doing. But the glass houses are not necessary anymore. The secret politics have also thrived so far in your time that no possible means will be unattempted in order for them to achieve their vain and domineering purpose. If you would be privy to the secrets of many states, actually, you would scream horrendously, Lord, please strike them down, because it could not be any worse in the deepest hell than it is here. I do not want to divulge such secrets to you, for if you only catch a single glimpse on their fruits, it cannot possibly slip by you to see, with the greatest certainty, whose spirit's children such prophets are who bring forth such glorious fruits. What is the reason for all this? Let's look at the kingdom that is surrounded by water, England. There are so many libraries and newspapers in this kingdom that it would be possible to cover Europe and Asia three times with the sheets and nowhere else have people read so much like in this kingdom. But you also do not find easily another place with a greater callousness and completely hardened hearts as in this kingdom. With the greatest indifference of the world can such an educated great one, abounding in gold, well read and well taught, look at a thousand poor wailing, destitute and homeless people in front of his palace, as they die from hunger, without being moved to hand those many dying ones a piece of bread. Question: Is this not a glorious fruit of great literacy? and often deep mathematical and mechanical wisdom? Isn't it great when one can build working machines by such mathematical and mechanical wisdom, 
by which thousands of people are robbed of their bread in one whack and are sentenced to a starvation death? Isn't it awesome to build train systems, by which for one thing, a lot of carters and other craftsmen lose their income, and secondly, so many properties of the farmers are destroyed by all these great and beautiful roads and rails, so that he will have to grasp the beggar's staff soon thereafter? And thirdly, another great benefit is coming to the surface, which is, that on all these paths, the luxury and industry thereof can be transported even more quickly, so that humanity will be ruined physically and spiritually even faster, and the hearts of the rich people will become as hard as the roads very soon, out of which they converse together through trade and swindle. Aren't these glorious fruits of great literacy and its forthcoming learnedness? Do we not call persons intelligent and prudent if they can transform their mind into money? But exactly because of this, since the mind can also contribute so much money, the love has gotten completely off course, and the deed thereafter is almost not known anymore. I mean, we have enough machines which act according to the mind. So why bother with human hands? For human hands could, by their action, actually awaken the love of the negotiant for his laborers. To prevent this from happening, let us construct many machines, because they work much faster and do not demand the owner's heart. Only once in a while, if something is coincidentally damaged, his mind is needed, which will repair the damage by means of a wage reduction. Tell me, is it not literally so everywhere around you? Begging is prohibited, but building machines is being rewarded with a bonus. So what about the poor people? Oh, that'll be taken care of. I mean, there are a lot of poor houses and fathers who take care of the poor ones. Collections are being done, and theaters and balls are being conducted. In this way, the poor ones are taken care of so well that the first ones become semi-arrested ones, and the others, the free ones, receive monthly such an amazing sum that they can eat almost enough once a day. How much from the poor relief fund actually goes to the poor ones? I do not have to mention. You hopefully know that. Just remember the necessary. Human requirements are the prohibition of begging right next to such a participation and you'll start to recognize how excellently these poor people are taken care of, which are lucky enough to get something out of such a fund. But what's left for the ones who have not been heard yet by the fathers of the poor? Look, what glorious fruits of literacy, reading and the great culture of the mind these are. Wouldn't it be better if you read and learned less? And what you learn and read consists thereof, that you know what man's duty is, and yes, even the duty of a Christian. Wouldn't it be better to actually act and fulfill the real duty of man after such a short, useful research, instead of reading and writing your entire life and completely forget about the deed, according to my word? I said it, do not be vain listeners, but doers of the word. But where are these doers now? Are these the machines and luxury manufacturers? Or is it the managers of the railway and the businessmen? Or is it the knights of the industry and the owners of the sugar plantations in America? Or is it the money and gold hooked and domineering clergy? I have certainly a sharp vision and I can see far and wide. And I must create for myself also a highly enlarging telescope to find the doers of my word on earth. I even feel bad if it is enlarged a trillion times, because the number is still so small that I am not able to discern if they are thousands, hundreds, ten, or even zero. For this reason, I have a much bigger telescope in the works. You will surely understand what I mean by that, while you are working a little on it yourself. An entire central sun disk shall serve as a lens. Through this, I want to contemplate the number of the doers of my word very closely. Should I behold on the whole earth a complete tenth, 
I will push back my judgment for a thousand years. But if the number is below one-tenth, I shall limit my patience on the number of the doers of my word until a great general judgment, which means for each doer one year. People will certainly say, Lord, actually there are quite a lot of benevolent people. But I answer them, yes, there are a lot of hundred thousandth, ten thousandth, and thousandth, maybe even hundredth doers of my word. But when I add them all together, they are scarcely one complete doer. But why? What is the one who owns a hundred thousand and does not give the poor ones at least a ten thousandth part of his wealth, knowing my word, which I spoke to the rich young ruler? Question, is this one more than ten thousandth doers of my word? Truly, I do not ask after these, for surely I will not notice them through my telescope, only the whole ones. I have raised such a telescope also in the time of Noah, and since I did not find more than eight doers of my word, I let the judgment happen. I am afraid now, if I will, during the current contemplation, observe Noah's number once again, and this for the reason, because the politics and industry have reached much higher peaks than during Noah's time. And regarding the present cruelty, even Hanek wasn't worse than this. Just pick up the 12 hours and compare. Therefore it is now, as it was in the days of Noah, a ripe fruit of literacy and erudition. By this it becomes also clear that the salvation of mankind does not depend from reading and hearing much, but rather it depends from the deeds according to the law of love. I mean, this should be clear too. Therefore soon another central sum on account of the enlargement of the lens on my telescope.